Seventh chapter. Turn with me, if you would, to the seventh chapter of Joshua. And I want to start reading at the second verse. Book of Joshua, 7th chapter, the second verse, says that Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethel, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about eh, two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Stretch your hands this way, if you will. Heavenly Father, God, I'm asking you for your anointing. Oh, my God, God, in God, heaven, we want to touch you. God, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to use this really vessel. God, help me just get out of the way. Father, help me put my feelings in God. Help me put, put myself, God, my abilities out of the way, God. And Father, let your glory shine through God. Preach this word. God, touch our hearts, our eyes, our ears, God, and expound your word unto us. God, help us to receive all that your word has for us this morning, God. Feed us from your table, we pray, with thy bountiful supply. For it's in Christ Jesus' holy name that we ask it. And the church would say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if we had a red. A little bit earlier, we would have read where the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan River. We would have read where God made the water stand up on the heap. It didn't just dry up a little bit. But the Bible says that the waters that came down stood up, up on the heap. And the children of Israel, the Bible says, crossed over on dry ground. More than that, they had proof that they had crossed through because God had them uh, to take some stones out of the middle of the river and place them on the other side for a testimony. And even in the middle of the river, the Bible says that Joshua took 12 stones and, and made a monument right there in the middle of the river. I cannot tell you, God's evident, God, His power is evident from the beginning in the middle and all the way to the end. His power is also visual. We found out the God that they were serving, that, that, that they were His people, that, that He led through uh, the river on dry ground, we'd have found out that when they got to, to Jericho, uh, that, that instead of just rushing headlong uh, into attacking the city, they would march around the city uh, one time each day uh, for six days. Uh, but on the seventh day, uh, we found out that, that we would have read uh, where the walls, uh, uh, where they marched around it seven times. Uh, and because uh, they had obeyed the word of God, and because they had they didn't rush headlong against the city, but they listened to the voice of God. And God said, march around that thing six days, one time. And He said, on the seventh day, He said, march around it seven times. He said, let the priest blow the horn. He said, let the, the men of war go prepared. And He said, be prepared for the victory. And we find out that they walked around the thing seven times. And the Bible said that the people gave it was a shout of victory and because they had the anointing and the blessing of God when they shouted, the Bible said glory to God, that the walls fell down flat and they descended up straightway each one of them. Bless the Lord. Mighty God. Yes, hallelujah. What a mighty God. Awesome, hallelujah. We'd have found out and out of that whole city, yes. there were just a few people saved. Yes. Few people mm -hmm. left alive. And that would have been Rahab and her 
her family because she helped despise get yes. back to the land of Israel. Yes. Bless. And because they had made a covenant. Yes. But the Bible says, and everybody else, of course, had to listen. <laughs> when God tells you to get the sin out of your life, He don't tell you to get a little bit of it out and leave the rest. Right. He doesn't tell you to do a job halfway. Right. But when God tells you to do a work for Him, He says do it with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, body, everything that is within you. Work for God while it is day or the night coming when no man can work. Yes. And uh, uh, Jericho was no exception. God told me, go in there, you destroy everything, and you leave everything. It's all mine. It's sanctified, holy unto me. Yes. We find out where they went in there, and they destroyed all. And only they have, mm -hmm. and her family, yes. escaped the land. That's right. Mighty God. Yes. What a mighty God. You know the children of Israel, I don't know whether they were outnumbered, but I know that, that, that the enemy was behind the big wall. There was logically no way that they was going to be able to conquer Jericho, but God supplied every need according to His riches in glory, and they were overcomers. Yes, hallelujah. Went to bed where they went in there and they just took control and they slaughtered everything. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we find out if we read it that not every one eating the word of God. There was somebody in the midst of that congregation had thought they could do it their way. They knew what God said, but they thought they could do it their way. Can I tell you, your way will not get you into heaven, but it's God's way or no way. It's God's way or hell. It is God's way or nothing. That's right. Yes, it is. I can not believe that. He knew. He had been told to leave everything alone. He sanctified holy under God. <laughs> but we find out that Achan thought because you know, nobody will know. No. I can get away with this yeah. and nobody will know and he just reached over and got a handful of stuff. He and I can just see him in my mind's eyes. He scurried back to camp while everybody else still, still cleaning out the devil and, and his ally. He running back to camp and sliding that stuff up under his tent. Mm -hmm. Trying to hide it. Right. And evidently, he was a perfect slick old fellow because nobody knew about it. No. Somebody knew though. Not nobody down here, but somebody knew. So we come after this great victory. Serving the God that they serve. Hey, can I tell you, the Bible says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that knocked the walls down. He's the same God that we're serving this morning. The same God that parted the Red Sea. He's the same God that we're serving today. The same God that parted the Jordan River. Glory to God. He's still the same. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the children of Israel, oh, they were confident now, buddy. Yes. They had seen the miracles of God. Yes. <laughs> and they were ready to march on and to conquer. Yes. You know what the problem was? They had to begin to look around. And they saw this little city of Ai. See, they had won these battles because they had listened to what God told them to do. They had taken instructions from the, from the master designer. And they had been victorious. But now because they had, they had gone through such wondrous victories, can I tell you, that we as Christians, when God works in mighty ways for 
need to give a little compassion and think that because God works some great miracle for us that we don't have to seek Him anymore. That we don't, we don't have, have to fall on our knees before Him anymore. We don't have to seek His direction anymore. And we try to do things on our own. But can I tell you that when we do that, that is when we fail. Yes. But they were confident. We get confident. Oh, look what God did for me. Oh, you know God allowed me to pray for that individual and that individual was healed. Oh, God allowed me to minister to this individual and they were saying, and that's great. I'm not putting that down in the lake. That's what we'd better be doing. But when we start thinking that it's because of our righteousness and because of our power, then that's when we are setting ourselves up for a fall. Yes, the man is true. I'm sure the children of Israel in their, <laughs> in their camp, Joshua told them to go spy out the land of Ai. They came back. Oh, you know, Joshua, man, just don't worry about sending everybody up there. <laughs> we don't need everybody. I'll let, let some of them stay here and just rest. But, you know, it's, it's a small city. And then, you know, there, there's not very many people in there. And, buddy, we can take this thing. We can handle this thing. <clears throat> Sound like a lot of people that I know today get so wrapped up and tied up in their own abilities, not realizing that their own abilities have been the actual hand of God working in their life, but they want to take credit for what God has done. Yes. So we find out that they took a few men and went to Ai. And the Bible says, Ai, a man of Ai took care of them. Took care of them in a hurry. And the men of Israel had to run. Now, have, have we read a little bit before this? We'd have found another instance where Israel did not bother to consult with God. Because see, when, when they had overcome the city of Jericho, there were some men that came in to their camp. They were wore clothes that were just absolutely worn out. They had wine bottles, water bottles that were uh, 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 decayed and, and were, were flaky because they were old. They had shoes that didn't have no tread left on them. And they came up to Joshua and said, we heard uh, we heard uh, what your God uh, has done for you. Uh, can I tell you uh, how to live for God? Uh, it won't be long uh, and the world will hear what God is doing. Uh, and, uh, and listen, uh, I believe, uh, I believe uh, it's about to happen uh, here at Lynn Church of God. Uh, we're about to have people come and say, I've heard uh, of what God uh, is doing uh, at Lynn. Yes. Make a pact with us. Let's sign an accord. Make a, let's make a deal. <laughs> Princes of Israel, Joshua, look these men over. Goodness, I wonder how far they had to travel to get here. Sounds like they had to travel for weeks. And they're coming trying to make peace with us already. Not once did they consider, hey, something might, might be up here. You can't always go by appearances. No. <laughs> mm. Well, I could chase that baby for about five miles if I had the time. Bless But they made a pact with the Gibeonites. And it wasn't but just a couple of days later, they found out that in fact, the people had faked it all and they lived about 8 to 15 miles away. 
easily a one day's journey. But they had come and made a peace pact with Israel because Israel neglected. Now see, God had already told them to destroy all the people in the land because they had corrupted the land. But yet, because they made a, Israel made a peace pact with them, they could not harm them without God. Because see, the Bible tells me that all liars, what is a liar? A liar is a person that will tell you they'll do something and then they turn around and do something else. That is a liar. So they couldn't harm them. Twice. We read about before this point. Well, at, at this point. We read of twice where the children of Israel had not consulted God. And I look around at the world that we live in and I see person after person after person that professes the name of Christ in their lives, but yet I see that they will not bend the knee to Him and will not ask Him for guidance. They will not ask Him for any direction they want to do it for themselves anyway, but they know how to do it. And the result is always failure. If God ain't in it, it ain't worth having. Leave it alone. Yes, amen. But they were confident. Boy, them Gibeonites. Man, they were so scared of us. They know we're powerful. This is, you know, the, the people of Jericho, they were, they were so afraid of us. And God gave us that big old city. Now look at this little bitty town here. Shoot. That ain't hardly worth messing our shoes up for. But let's go take it. Huh. Little men of Ai showed them a thing or two. But it was because, hey, listen, Israel should not have been able to take Jericho. Military, militarily speaking, they should not have been able to overcome Jericho. The men of Jericho had all kinds of weapons. They had the swords, they had the spears, that they undoubtedly had chariots, they had all the weapons. And Israel should have logically been wiped out. If they could have even got in, they shouldn't have even been able to get in the city. How many of you know that when things are impossible for us, all things are possible for Him? And if we will walk in Him, He makes all things possible in our lives. Yes, hallelujah. Lord. Lord. But we've got to seek Him. Yes. We've got to seek Him. Yes. But we find out that because Achan grabbed some of that stuff out of Jericho that he brought a curse upon all of the people of Israel. Yes. Now I talk to people and they say, I'm just one person. I don't make a difference. Can I tell you that each one of us makes a difference? Each one of us makes a difference. We may not feel like it sometimes. Sometimes we may feel like we're in this thing all alone. But each one of us makes a difference. We find out that Achan's sin made a difference. And not just in his life, not just in his family's life, but in the entire congregation of the children of Israel. The men of Israel we know were defeated. And they come running back to camp. Whining and moaning. Groaning. Joshua, the great man that he was, he went because he fell before God and went, God, why? I think Joshua kind of got an attitude with God. God, why did you allow this to happen? You said you would give us our enemies. And I believe that's the way that you, because listen, when the heart is, is heavy burning, when we are, we are sick, that heart, we tend to get within the flesh and we forget that God 
Joseph got down on his knees finally and began to seek the voice of God one more time. <laughs> he began to see what thus said the Word of God one more time. He began to realize that it's not Joshua, but it's God. Can I tell you, we need to get back on our knees one more time. We begin to seek God one more time. We need to get into the Word of God one more time because it's not us, it's God. Yes, Amen. hallelujah. <laughs> God, why? You allow this to happen. You know what God told him? To get up. This happened because of sin in the camp. And you got to get it out. Yes. Now listen. I can was one of the children of God. He was one of the church members. He was uh, one of the brothers. He wasn't some sinner <laughs> out in the world. He wasn't some enemy coming against him with the sword and the spear. He was one of the family of God. But yet, we find out that his sin separated him from God. Yes. God did not separate himself from Israel. Israel separated themselves from God in the form of Achan. Yes. He separated himself from God when he took of the accursed thing and hid it. In his tent, under his tent. And yet, we, are, <laughs> we have church members that think they're so holy and they're so righteous that they can do no wrong. They're God's greatest gift to the church to hear them tell it. And yet, maybe they're still handling the accursed thing. And wondering why the church isn't growing. Wondering why God's not working the way that God used to work in the church. Wondering why the Spirit of God is not moving in their services anymore. It's because maybe there's sin in the camp. And God cannot bless sin. But He was one of the children of God. Can I tell you, just like the children of Israel, if they'd have kept going and they'd have said, well, that city too powerful. Them, 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 them guys are just too, too swift for us. Let's go over here to take this city. They'd have got beat at another city. Yes. And they'd have got beat at another one. And another one. Why? Because as long as there is sin in our lives, as long as there was sin in the camp, they could not win. That's right. They had to get the sin out. But we'll continually fail till we get the sin yes. out of our count. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joshua 7, 13. God speaking to Joshua. God speaking to Joshua and said, Get up! Sanctify the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, now wait just a minute. We talked about this in Sunday school. And sanctify him. Sanctify her. Oh, you're perfect, Joshua. Don't mess with yourself. Don't mess with any of your leaders. Yeah, you see these people that, that are running around out of sin? You get up and you go sanctify them. That's not what God said to them. He said, get up, sanctify yourself. Oh, but when you get saved, you get sanctified. Can I tell you, when you get saved, you have the want to to get a little sanctification.
temptation in your life. But listen, and God will help you in every way. And God can help you. But in the end, it comes down to if you have got to lay down the cigarettes, if you have got to lay down the tobacco, if you have got to lay down the pornography, if you have got to lay down the sins of the world, if you yes. sanctify yourself oh, in the power of a living God. Yes. You can't do it on your own. No. <laughs> You'll be like the children of Israel. You can't do it. But through God, all things are possible. Yes. <laughs> God told Joseph, said, get up. Sanctify the people. Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. If ever there was a message for that day, it is this one. Now, sanctify yourself for tomorrow. That's right. Jesus is coming. Yes, He is. One of these tomorrows, if He don't come today, He's coming tomorrow. Yes. Sanctify yourself against tomorrow. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> told Joshua sanctify yourself against tomorrow for thus saith the Lord God there is an accursed thing in the camp <laughs> there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee O Israel God was telling them their sin in the camp, there's something that has a curse placed upon you that somebody has hid in the congregation and the congregation will not be blessed until that individual becomes submissive unto the living God. Yes. I don't know why God had me preach this this morning. Unless... Maybe for somebody on the internet, maybe somebody on... I don't know where this will go. But God knows what He's doing. Yes. But God told him to sanctify yourself against tomorrow. There's an accursed thing in the midst of thee, my people. There's a, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O congregation of the church. There's a myth, there's an accursed thing in the midst of thee, the sinners of the world. And you must get it out before I will bless. Yes, hallelujah. What God was saying. Yes, it is. Hmm. Oh, church. I feel in my spirit. <laughs> Oh, my Lord and my God, I feel this in my spirit. There's an accursed thing in the midst of thee. Oh, my people. Oh, Israel. And now, you, this is God said, you cannot stand before your enemy until you take away the cursed thing from among you. People that want to believe that they can live any way they want to. And the blessings of God will still flow in their life. They need to be where God just told the children of Israel. He said, I cannot bless you as long as there is sin in your life. Get the sin out. You want the blessings of God. Get the sin out. You want the anointing of God. Get the perfect thing out. Yes, hallelujah. You cannot stand before thine enemies until you take away the cursed thing from among you. I don't care how strong you think you are. You cannot stand and have a cursed thing in your life. Yeah. Israel found out that good. 
you go down through the ages, they found out they could not. God's telling us today, you cannot stand as long as there's something cursed in your life. Hid up under your tent. Take away the cursed thing from among you. What is the cursed thing in your life? We live in an era and in a time where people say you can do anything you want to do as long as you confess Christ one time you can go back out and live like the devil the rest of the time. And you can live any kind of cursed life that you want to live. But yet because you've confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you're still saying, can I tell you, that even the devils in hell believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And every one of them, every Bible says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The devils believe that. Yes. That don't make them a Christian, does it? No. Who is a Christian? They that do the will of God. They that have searched their camp, found that little nugget of sin, have tossed it outside and got rid of all the evidences of, of the sin, got rid of every last crumb, every last inch of the sin out of their camp. Yes. Yes. Huh. Is it lust? Is it pride? What is the accursed thing? I can't speak for anybody else. But I would ask you, to, each one of us here, each one that's listening, what is the cursed thing in your life? Is there any cursed thing in your life? If there is, you better get it out because you'll not stand before your enemies until you get right. the curse thing yes. out of your life. You will not stand it. Is it taking things that don't belong to you? Maybe it's just pride. Children of Israel, they were full of pride. Hey, look, we destroyed Jericho, buddy. Is that, what, 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 is, what is the accursed thing? Is there any accursed thing in your life? If there is, we better get it out. Jesus is coming. Coming soon. Now, we go back to the sanctify yourselves, God told them. God told Joshua to tell the people, sanctify yourselves. Leviticus 20th chapter and the 7th verse. God speaking. And He says, sanctify yourselves therefore. Hey, listen, if it was good back then, it's good today. Yes. <laughs> And he said, Sanctify yourself therefore and be ye holy for I am holy. We serve a holy God and God will not bless sin. Right. Be ye holy. Yes, sir. Even as He is holy. Yes. What is it? We talked about Liar. You know, I, I, I've talked to some people and people have promised me stuff. I've had people promise me they're going to come to church and I ain't seen them come through that door yet. You know what that makes them? Bible says all liars shall have a part of the lake of fire. Now, I'm still hoping and praying that some of them will come through that door. But somebody... A liar is somebody that will make a pact with you, that will make a covenant with you, and then not fulfill it. But yet, I heard, I put out a credit application one time. And the guy that took the credit application, I believe it was for a mattress, and this was years ago, but he asked me, he said, are you a preacher? Yes, sir. He goes, uh-oh. I said, uh-oh. He said, yeah. He said, preachers are notorious. Preachers are notorious, he said, for not paying their bills. Mm. 
You know what he is saying? A bunch of liars out there that call themselves Christian. I said, well, I'll pay you. We paid him. But the point is, had I not been paying him, because see, I entered into a covenant with him that I would pay him for those matches. Mm -hmm. We're actually with the bank, but through him. But yet we 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 have a Evidences in this world that there are more liars out there than you can check a stick at nowadays. But people that want to think they're so sanctimonious and so holy that won't even keep their word. But the Bible tells us in Leviticus, sanctify yourselves. Be ye holy, saith the Lord, for I am holy. And he will not accept any less than the best that you have. Amen. Amen. Why, wow, where did the time go? <laughs> 2 Corinthians 6, chapter 17, verse talks about not touching the unclean thing. Achan touched the unclean thing. He touched the thing that was already uh, had, had been committed to God. And when he touched it, it became unclean. It became a curse unto him because he was stealing from God. That's what he was doing. He was stealing from God. But 2 Corinthians says, Wherefore come out from among the world. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean. Listen. Or will this touch not? Doesn't say don't grab it and hug it to you. It says, touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Ain't that a promise? Oh, yes. Ain't that a promise from God? Uh, yes. He said, keep yourself clean. Thank you, Lord. Get the, the, get the accursed thing out uh, of your camp. Get clean. Uh, sanctify yourself. Uh, and touch not the unclean thing. And I, uh, God said, I uh, will receive you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But I've got to be clean. Glory. I've got to be sanctified. Yes. I've got to be holy. For He is holy. Yes. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5.22 says avoid. That's what it says abstain. What does that mean? Stay away from it. From that all appearance of evil. Yes. But yet we want to, we see people walking around, we talked oh, about it in Sunday school, not being a clothesline preacher, but when you get cleaned up on the inside, God's going to clean up the outside. Yes, amen. You're not going to walk around walking, looking like the world, smelling like the world, talking like the world. That's right. You're going to be a separate people. Yes. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. Matthew 5, 16. Says, let your light, not your darkness, has within you, not that accursed thing, because there seems to be no accursed thing. We can get it out of the camp. But the Bible says uh, in, in, in Matthew 5 16, says, let your light so shine before men yes. that they may see what? Your good works. But now, wait a minute. My righteousness is filthy bags. How can I have any good works? Because when the love of God is in here, the love of God is going to manifest itself right here. It's going to manifest itself right here. It's going to manifest itself yes. everywhere. Yes. But let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Yes, ma'am. Not glorify you if you're in it for the glory. Gonna split the gates of hell wide open because your righteousness is <clears throat> yes. but to glorify your Father, yes. which is in heaven. Hallelujah! Stand yes. with me if you will. Yes. 